me reintroduce myself. My name is my name is Ajayo Lanrewaji, and um, by the special grace of God, I'm the founder of Livestock Express and um, Logistics. And from what Bro Priest said, I would like to 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 buttress on that a bit before going into why we are really here. Like you said, I started the laundry work in school, going to school, at few bankers I knew, and I was picking their clothes doing the laundry for them and getting some little hey while I was in school then some of my my mates in school do consider me a big boy because then I had this uncle that owned a car while I was doing laundry by the side so I was making money the only responsibility my parents were taking my dad was just my school fees my living expenses my feeding clothing and the likes were all on me and the i was able to do that all by myself and by the grace of god and at some point i had to bring to bring in some of my friends in school and some of my friends in kaduna that stayed with me i asked like oh guys come you can come and start a new life here in Illinois." and and they were basically living on me they had nothing else doing when they came in so much to struggle a year two years before they get before they had to get something doing so the feeding, the clothing, and other miscellaneous were so basically on me. So like you'll be wondering, how much was I really making from this laundry to be able to cater for all this responsibility? And um, in all of this to save for my own self, for my own responsibility. Am I speaking to somebody here? Of course, yes, sir. Sir. We, yes, are, sir. we are following. You can hear you, sir. Yeah. yeah, we are following. Sir. So, what the first thing I I I did when I started the laundry was setting out my priorities. Things that I know that oh, without this. I can't give the best of myself. I can't leave my purpose. Where I put my head, what I'll put in my mouth, what I will wear. I guess I should come again. Where I put my head, what I'll wear, and um, what I'll put in my mouth. I stood in Ilori and um, my this why I, I, I attended is one of those that is notorious for cultism. I attended Parapoli, studied mechanical engineering. So I had to look for a place in Ilori that one, where yeah, I'll put my head. I had to look for a place that I know that come what me, no matter how business, how bad business goes. I can easily pay my rent comfortably. Comfortably, I can easily pay my rent. And that place must be, or I should consider it a decent place where only people should come. They won't be, people won't be scared of coming back to come and visit me. It wasn't a flat. It was just a self-contained. It was just only me. I had no girlfriend. Just me alone before. I had to start employing people to come and work with me. I employed a friend who happened to be a brother now. His name is Olari Wadi, also graduated from Mini Lauren for class. Agreed. He works with me right now. So that was my first, that was the first thing I jotted down about where I will put my head and how I can easily afford to pay where I'm putting my head. Then, secondly, what I put 
in my mouth. I know I can't be eating like a governor, like a senator, but I try as much as possible to, to eat healthy. And I put my finance into what I eat too. I consider it very, very important. That is on the personal ground. Then lastly, what I wear. I was a student then. There was nobody to to impress. So I had this this brother I was saying me. His name is Glenray. And anytime he's going home, we'll travel down to Lagos. I'll look for students going to Lagos. I'll I'll pick them in my uncle's car. Three thousand to Lagos. I'll go to Antwani. They call the place Katangwa. It's not far from Abuja. I'll go there, get the same shirt, bring them back to Ilori, dry clean them, and wear them. People like me, are like, where are you getting these things from? Because I knew then I could not afford those designer. A designer of a, 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 a designer shirt to be around seven thousand era, eight thousand era, nine thousand and above. And I consider myself that I cannot afford. So here is it. At some point, I graduated and I asked myself, if I should go to service, how, how do I intend to manage myself? Because at that point, my dad is this kind of person that, okay, I've tried enough for you, you graduated, nobody sent me to school. So at this particular point of your life, your destiny is your own hand. And I sat down, had that conversation with my older, same older. I'm not going for service. Like, how do you tend to get a job? Like, I just have to tell them, they should, know, they should not worry about me on that. And I'm going to be fine. So I kept doing that laundry thing. And at some point, I felt, oh, I'm coming up with Someday, I would like to, to settle down. Like, I should be doing better financially than I am right now. Um, I travel a whole lot, even while I was doing the laundry. Sometimes I would just save up to 30,000 naira towards December, maybe two weeks. I grew up in Kaduna, I would just travel to Kaduna, from Kaduna, I would go to Kanu, Kanu, go to Sokoto, Sokoto, go to Kebi, go to Zampara. I just travel around to, to, to know more about my country. And in between, I discovered that when I was traveling, there are certain things that people are not really exploring in certain states in this country. And I feel like, oh, Larry, you can make money out of these things. So I came back to the learning. I started praying that I want to leave the learning, leave my laundry, and go and start a life, go and start a new life in Chebi. And only at this distance, I wouldn't even call the person my uncle. So somebody I just grew up knowing in Kaduna, he stays in Kebi, he works with Global Com. So I told him I was coming around. He said, no problem, that I should come. He's a Muslim. So I moved, gave a few of my things out. The ones I even intend selling to people. People bought it from me, but they did not pay me. So I had to go to Kebi. The person gave me like a boy's daughter, and I had no job when I got to Kebi. The laundry, was just in the learning, nobody was doing anything. I had to tell my customers. It was very, it's like, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't advise anybody to do that. It was a very bad decision, a very terrible decision for me to make. So here is it, and I would like everybody here to listen attentively. You could recall that I said when I started traveling, going, traveling around the north, I, I had a goal. The goal was, what are those things that are obtainable here in the north? That is not obtainable in the east, in the south, or in the or in the west. And that I arrived at livestock and grain. So randomly, I had some money with me. I will go to the market, livestock market in the north. You just don't easily get cows in but you have to go to their villages. You go to certain places, they don't even understand the Uta. They speak like a local language, they call it Zabarma, or they speak French. Yeah, we have Nigerian coming in and people from the Republic. So I, I do that randomly. I just travel to these villages to understand 
how the market works. Then at some point, I got a job in KB. It was getting frustrating. I got a job, and the the pay was sixty thousand naira. I was saving, I was saving that money, and at some point, I told bro, peace. That I want to leave the country. What the God I've I've, I've I put out for myself is not looking at if this goal is going to work out in Nigeria. Let me leave this country. Ask me where I'm going to. I'm going to Dubai. And in between the visa came, I called for peace. We prayed together. He's like, well, you pray about this thing. Pray, pray, pray. And sincerely, one for my motive of living this life, one of the reasons why I want to leave then, I intend living then, was to make more money. Then I got to Lagos. I started praying. Then I would just see random people calling me. Ah, somebody gave me your number. They said you're into life. So can I? Can you help me buy five goods? Can you help me buy ten goods? And um, I would say yes. I was in Lagos, and that took me back to the point of goal setting financially. That I had plans of milking the livestock market. In the north, but I was not patient enough. Like I set a specific time for myself that uh, within the shortest period of time, I should be able to do this. I should be able to do that. But that wasn't God's timing for me. Like I, in anything I do, in our financial life, God factor is very, 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 very important. Very, very, very important. No matter how how well you think you're doing, how much money you think you're getting. God factor is very, very important. At that point, I told God peace that I'm going back to Kevin. And I had no money on me. It was the person that sent me 10,000 naira. I took a night bus from Lagos. I went back to Kevin. And um, from 2021, everything changed. So, Are you guys with me? Yes, we are, we are with you, sir. Yeah, so from 2021, everything changed. We are in 2023, January, 2023, 7th of January. And um, from 2021 to so December 31st, I've been able to buy and sell over 10,000 cows which is around one point something billion. Yeah, I know this, this is going to sound unbelievable, but I think Princess, yeah, witness, like is a, is a, she's a witness. She, we, we work briefly together and um, she can give you in and I've been able to sell, buy and sell over 200 million naira worth of good. So everything is around 1.4 billion between 2021 and um, 2022. And at the end of last year, I was just going through my statement of account and I was just wondering how did this happen? And um, here is it. When I went back to Kevin, that I started making money. I'll buy goods, five goods. Maybe my profit on that five goods should be around 10,000 naira. I will invest back that money into that same business. I will go to the market. When next I'm going to the market, I'll buy a good worth 10,000 naira. I'll send it to a lorry or Ibadan. I'll sell it for 12,000 or 13,000 naira. It wasn't my, 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 my lookout for them wasn't in, in the money. Because I, I loved what I was doing then. I engaged oh. people, the tax, and everything. So try to make money from it. If somebody should tell me, Larry, I want a good of 15,000 there. One. You could recall that I said the first time 
when I went to KB, I would randomly go to the market where I practically had nothing to go at the market, nothing to buy. I was doing a market survey. So if somebody if, so, if somebody should tell me that they need a good for fifteen thousand there, I know a market that will go to in KB state that it goes for fifteen thousand naira in Ilan, I will buy it for nine thousand or ten thousand naira in that market, and I will use five hundred naira in sending it down. So I have like a profit of three k or four k from that deal. But I'm not buying one for this person. I might be buying like ten. So four times ten, that's forty thousand naira. Just me buying one goat. Just buying goods for one person. Then there's somebody again. Ah, Larry, I want cow. I want five cows. On that, I can make 10 to 10,000 naira. And that's like 50,000 naira. So it means that in a day, I can go to the market and comfortably make 90,000 naira. I understand that, Usa. And I have, I have people too that walk around with me like, oh, oh God, see this good. It's very nice. Let's buy it. And it's quite cheaper too. So, And I go, I buy. So now, for now, I started making money. Then at some point, I realized I needed to move out of the house I was staying with, the person that gave me a space to stay. After then, I think I could afford a house. If I should get the house of 500,000 naira in I should be the biggest boy in that town. It's a very small town. But then, I knew what was what was ahead of me? I was already making money. Like it was so sure. I was so sure that in a week, we'll comfortably, Larry, you will make 300,000 naira. Comfortably. Comfortably, I will make it. At some point, if I don't leave my house, I have people that work with me. If I should tell them to go to the market for me, buy this and send it out to you, Larry, the minimum I will make in a week is around 250,000 naira. Then, but I knew where I was heading. I had to look for a very decent place in Chevy, a very decent apartment. And I paid for it. This apartment cost me just half of the money I make in a month, in one month in Chevy. And let me take you back to the point at which I said, setting your priorities, knowing your priorities, knowing things that are very, very important to you. It is one thing to want something. It is another thing to know that, oh, if I'm getting this thing, this thing is very, very important to me. So at some point, I, I, I realized that, uh, okay, I needed to move and I needed to get a decent place. Then I started buying a few things in. I could buy everything at once. I had the money. I had the money. I was making the money. And I had good saving culture because I was able to set my priority. Then in between, an organization came. It's an agricultural company based in Ibadan. Send me. Somebody recommended me to them. I did not submit my CV, and we had a conversation. Can we go into a contact? They said, no, they want me to work for them. OK, no, I like, want me to work for you. This is how much you guys are going to pay me. They're like, ah, I know they are just, they are just a new startup. In the next five months, we'll review my salary. And uh, they did not ask me for my CV. They did not. They did not. And this would bring me. This will take us back to the point at which I said God factor too. As a believer, God factor is very, very, very important. I did not submit my CV. It was only a recommendation. And sorry, I, I forget to, I forgot to take this point. Being a decent person, being a decent person is very, very important to your financial goals. By the grace of God, I don't drink, I don't smoke. I don't really have a social life. I know that's not very good, but I think it has helped me to, to achieve my financial goals. Now, imagine I was drinking, smoking, humanizing. 
first tendency that I might be struggling financially if care is not taken. Because I always think, oh, this money will come. I can, I can spend it anyhow. And things might just start crumbling. And so, so I have to negotiate with this organization. And the offer was very good. And we worked together for like six or seven months. Then at some point, I had to call them, no, I don't want to work for you guys anymore. Let's go into a contact. Whatever you need in the north. Livestock experts to get it for you. But we have like a fixed amount for each of what I'm getting for you. A commission that you'll be giving to my company if you guys are ready to work. And we have to, we have to agree on that. We have to sign that. And it is very, very important to, to have somebody you are accountable to. Somebody that uh, Somebody that you know that you can tell almost everything. I have one, and that person is Bob. Peace. We talk. We involve like I carry him along in almost everything I do. I carry him along. Fine. He's not into the business that I'm doing, but. His wife, his wife's counsel has always been of help to where I am. Yesterday, I was on phone with him, and I was joking with him that, ah, so he made a millionaire out of me, and he was just smiling. So back to what I was saying, being a decent person. The recommendation I got to work with that company was from one of those people I helped while I was in Illinois that stayed with me, one of my friends that stayed with me. So like, uh, I, have the, I have a brother, a friend that works, that is in the north, he knows about all these things. You can, you can trust with anything. The CEO of the company was somebody I've never met, and they started entrusting millions of naira into my hands. Like, their money, the, the money I handled for send me, before we had to like, buy a separate with, with around 720 million naira. I was audited, a whole lot was done, but I came out clean because I never stole from them. I had something good going on for me. I was very diligent with what I was doing. So, in your financial goal, you must be a decent person. Be a decent person. It is very, very important. Be a decent person. I'm not saying you should not have like a social life like I do, but be a decent person. There are certain things that if you should afford, will make you see. I hear like people, there are different slangs flying around, trends, thought life, hmm. problem with the finish. Yes, problem with the finish. Enjoy it, it works for you. But please know when to. And money into it is very very important and if you're a decent person you will definitely know and as a child of god you will definitely know things you will spend your money on if you're a critical thinker you will definitely you will definitely know things to spend your money on your family members you have your cousins your nephew you have you have kids intent achieving a certain age of your life. If you have the money, please go out, do it. But be sure it's something that glorifies Jesus. Two days ago, somebody was asking me like, uh, where's your car? And I was like, I don't own a car. I don't have access to a car. And in between, he said, well, oh, you're a business man, you're doing well. I said, yes, it is because it is not my priority right now. When the time comes, I know I would get it. I know I can afford to. I stay in a very small town. I don't need a car. Anywhere I want. I pay. Then, 
lastly partnership 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 will really make you go far in your financial life it will really make you go far you can be you can be making a millionaire alone when you have somebody that that is doing what you're doing and that person if you are fortunate that person is a believer because for me i i'm into partnership with some people that that are no that are no believer that are muslim considering what i do the, the, the nature of business that i do and this was one of the most important things that helped me last year at some point I was craving for more money. I felt like, no, Larry should be doing half a million in a week. Then I traveled down to Lagos, traveled to Ibadan, traveled to Ibadan. Why are the people that are into what I'm doing, the Fulani, the Ausas, these guys are illiterate, but they know money. I had to go sit with them. Because at that point, I knew my money. My imaginary money with them. And how do I get it? I need to have a fair negotiation deal with them. So in your financial goal, very, very important. It's very, very important. If you should get a believer to go into a part to go into partnership with like that's very, 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 very good. But for me, it has been the other way, and God has been so, so, so faithful. It's not even Yoruba, full and I was as, and um, finally, let me say this. In your financial goal, Learn to invest in the kingdom. Things that will propel the kingdom. You you have a friend that is a full time minister. You have an uncle that is a pastor. Like you know, they practically have nothing else they are doing outside propelling the gospel. They are sold out. Support them financially. Support them financially. Sometimes it is not enough to send money to them. Oh, you just get food stuff or you see nice clothes around, buy, send to them. And please, this does not say you should not take care of your parents or your older siblings or your younger siblings. I said it in the first place. Extending and of kindness to your family is very, very important but things that will propel the kingdom of God. It is very important to invest our money into it. We really do. It is very, very important. And I can assure you, it works. It is something I do. It is something I do. And it is working for me. And I want to assure you that each and every one of us here can, can after now, it think about everything I said and try as much as possible to expend energy into it. I can assure you, your your financial life will change. And if there's anybody that needs help here, I don't know, please have my number. You can reach out to me. I'm a very busy person, but I always try as much as possible to make myself available so that. We won't be around taxing ourselves for urgent issues. We rather give it to people outside, not to not within ourselves. Yeah. So thank you very much for giving me your time to, to share 
my journey. And presently, I'm even on transit to, to Lagos. So after night, there's anybody that needs my help, you can actually reach out to me. I reach out to Princess, you can easily reach me through her. So thank you, thank you. Please, Mr. Larry, wait. <laughs> yeah. I'm here. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, please. Can anyone hear me? I, I'm here. Princess. I can, I can hear I you. Can hear yes, you. we are still here. Thank you very much, Mr. Larry. I was, I was really yeah. blessed, actually. <laughs> Princess, I thought you instead of asking the question, so go ahead. Okay. Oh. Oh, um, hello, hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. So I think I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just um, um, stay in for Princess. I think, I think she left. Maybe I'll okay. talk or something. So um, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Larry. Um, you know, I, I, wow, wow. Um, you know, I'm, I'm currently a student, and at least, at least, I, I think I got one or two things. You know. Sharing from your experience as a student and moving to the to the business world and everything. So, all right, okay. I don't want to talk too much. I don't know. Do we have anybody here that wants to ask a question? Mr. Larry, any question before? Okay, I think Princess is back. Princess, can you hear us now? Hello, Princess. Yes, good afternoon. All right, all right. I think we lost. So you can. Uh, I think you have a question. The network logged me out. Mr. Larry, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. I really learned a lot from your example, your story. I I learned about um, taking God's factor very important in whatever I do or I want to do, but how to make use of opportunities around very well. Now, on how to be a decent person, what to do in order to achieve my financial goal too, and also accountable to at each point in time, okay. making good use of partnership and learning how to invest in the kingdom. Thank you so much, sir, for every of these examples. Um, please, if you've learned anything from this session, I would like you to, you know, clap for Mr. Larry Waju. It's really great having him here. I, I personally have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Please do well to you know. Me, if you've learned anything from Mr. Larry Waju, just have him. Give Mr. Larry Wadu a virtual clap. Thank you very much, sir. I don't know. I don't know if anyone has a question to ask Mr. Larry Wadu before he leaves. If you have any question, you can raise your virtual hand. We'd like to take just one question before we leave. Does anyone have a question to ask Mr. Larry Wadu? And maybe if you do after now, Nobody. you can um, catch me up. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, Actually, sir. Princess, two people raised up your hand. Thank you. Zainab band. Okay. Muhammad. I saw them raise their hand, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Please. Yeah. Yeah. 
Zainab. Let me just ask a question. Okay, okay, okay. Is she that... said she was clapping for you. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, thank all you. All, yeah. all right, then, please, I have a question. I think I would love to go there. All right, go ahead. All right, you can go ahead. Come all right, ahead. So, so the thing is, I just, you know, I think my own story now is, you know, you mentioned something about you being, at least since your school days, you started doing something like um, dry cleaning, at least something to keep yourself. You might get something that you only, your daddy only paid for your school fees, but at least the, your upkeep and everything was done by yourself. At least you got to yeah. So my own, my own scenario is, you know, my father only, has always told me that, Peter, you don't need to do anything. I will, I will provide for you to shine, read your books. That's what my father told me. And at least that's what I took in. I've always just been reading my books. I don't want to do any other thing. But, you know, I've just come to that stage of my life that, you know, even calling home for money now is it, getting a bit difficult for me. I, I just know it. Yeah. I've come to that stage of my life where I need to start doing something. So, in a way, I wish I wish I didn't take that my advice, that, that my dad's advice very well. I, I wish I had started something there. So, the thing now is, although I'm still, I'm, I'm still in my penultimate year, I'm in part four. So at least I'm okay. I'm in this stage, I'm in this stage of trying to see, okay, what can I do? What at least I want to start doing something. So in a way, I'm I'm feeling like I hope it's not too late for me, actually. I hope I can still I hope I can still do something for myself. I hope, like you said, you know, at least something I got from your everything you said is you have that entrepreneurial spirit in you. And that's something I'm yeah. trying to build in myself to at least that I want to do something. I want to I want to get to not just sit I do try to learn skills, do something with my life. And even you know, I've, I've got to learn that even at the end of the day, you may not set you with you may still have to sit later, but at least you know, like you said, it, it started from dry cleaning, you moved to yeah, you another thing. So what is your advice like for me? Like exactly for as a student now, trying to trying to start out. What is your advice? What okay. do you think I should? Yeah. Personally, I would suggest like do you have anything you're doing presently like maybe you're just doing it as as something you're just doing below, or you're not monetizing or you just think in your mind that you can actually do this thing if you should put in little energy do you have anything all right yes um 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 i'm still learning social media management that's something i'm currently working on at least okay. to well, you, 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 let me, let me bust your bubble. As human being, eh, I think God, for me, I believe God has given us capacity to do different, different things at, at different times of our life. Like, you can do social media management now, and um, in the next few years, you've been able to make some amount of money to venture into another thing. But the way you, the way you will do the social media management now will determine how well and how far you will go into other things you are doing. So on this particular one, you need to like sit and ask yourself if somebody is willing to give you all the support, or somebody is somebody is willing to pay a mentor for it. Like oh, this person wants to do this thing and um, he needs somebody to learn from are you going to make the best use of it or you just want to venture into this thing because you just feel like oh i need to be making some little amount of money and by the side you are you are looking for a nine to five job or you are looking for something bigger that is not bad but if you believe that from this social media thing that you want to venture into you can be a force to reckon with. I strongly want to believe that you would go far. And maybe this would be my only two contribution. I would say this. If you have anybody that you are looking up to in the social media management or wherever, and you think you don't have access to, or for you to have access to them, you have to pay them. You have to pay for mentorship and all. I would, I would, I, I will pay for that for you. That's if you are promising me.
want to decide on that. Can you hear me? Wow. Wow, I, I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. That was very... <laughs> yes. Money, 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 please. The whole decision-making as young people. Sometimes you, you might not have because you don't really have access to resources. And I know people could use this. For people that are ahead of us, they monetize almost everything. So for, for you to learn from certain people, they will tell you you have to pay a particular amount which I don't blame them for. So if you can sit and come to that conclusion that you want to really do this thing, and there's somebody you are going to learn from, and then the future pay for that, I agree. But you need to be sure that is what you want for yourself. It is not just something you want to do. Then after two months, you see that, ah, somebody is giving me their social media account to manage, then, then if the person is giving me 15k and your expectation is 200k or 100k, I believe when you learn from people that are ahead of you, you would know better. You would know if it's something you would want to do or just once while you waste time with. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Princess, so I, I think. Answered your question. Very well, sir. I think the, the 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 session is ending now. I saw a notification that in the next 30 seconds or so we will be handing off. So yeah, we are sir. running we are running out of time. Yeah. All right, so thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. We'll be